hey guys welcome to the scholar online youtube channel the channel that is all about learning okay i know it's been quite a while since i released a video i've just been busy and um you know i do release very long videos with a lot of content and so even if there's a little bit of lag in between the videos you definitely know that you have a lot of content to get through until i'm back again okay so today i am going to give you guys what i've been getting a lot of questions about for quite some time now we've been doing a lot of uh, tutorial series on creating like our ai content generators using um open ai api right so today what i'm going to do is i'm going to take all of that what i've taught you and i'm going to put it into an actual practical application because it's one thing for me to sit here and show you bits and pieces of the open ai api and show you bits and pieces of how it all comes together maybe in a flask application that's running on your personal computer but it's a completely different scenario when i take all of that and i put it into an actual working app that you can deploy and put on a domain and perhaps even start charging people to use all right so that's what i'm going to do and and i can't cover all of this in one tutorial so this is going to be the first one in a series of tutorials so maybe it will be a couple of them and some of them might be premium that i will charge for so we'll see as we go along but today is the first one so let's get through the the general admin first okay so i uh, remember to uh, uh subscribe to this channel okay so if you see a red button underneath the video that you're watching that says subscribe just smash that subscribe button and right next to it there's another sort of like a little belly thingy there just click on it because what that does is that every time i produce a new video you will get a notification that hey there's a new video on the channel especially now that we're going to be doing a tutorial series i won't produce all the videos at once we're going to go through them over a couple of weeks so you want to know definitely be the first one to be notified when the next video is up okay so subscribe and click the notifications and then go underneath the video and um there'll be a button there that says show more just open it up all right and when you open that one up there's a lot of links that you'll see there and because our tutorials tend to be quite long because i do a lot of explanations all right so what i do as well is that i will put video timestamps underneath there and you can just sort of click on the video timestamp and read about certain sections of the video so you don't watch you don't have to watch the whole entire couple of hours of video you can just go to the section that you want but I insist on being very, very descriptive because this is a learning channel and, um, you know, I'm not going to do a 10 minute video. I'm going to do like an hour, a two hour video. And if it's too long for you, then just jump to the section that you want to learn about and, you know, fast forward or do whatever you need to do. But we're trying to accommodate everybody so that people can actually go through this channel watch our videos as a step-by-step -step guide to be able to build the things that we're showing okay and then underneath there there'll be like our social media so definitely follow us on twitter follow us on facebook you know all the li links that you find there you know and let's get started right so today the website we're going to build is going to be a website that looks similar to this okay so paper type ai is a, an ai content generator site okay so you can come here you can create an account so we're going to do all that we're going to show you how to do user authentication so that people can log into your website all right and that you can keep profile information about them and we're going to show you how to do this little part like if someone is writing a blog and you want to generate blog content you know um that they can do that and then you can charge them for it based on you know the package that they are on you know we'll show you pricing we even going to do payment uh gateway integration right so this youtube uh tutorial is going to be as detailed as i come i'm going to show you practically everything i'm going to show you everything right i'm going to take you from zero step by step to you having a working website that looks exactly like this where you can um you know bill people you can manage pride whatever you can do all of that and i'm going to do this on this channel and everything i do will be displayed on camera yes there will be sections that will be a premium right because i also have to generate a living but i'll show you maybe 70 percent of it will be free and 30 percent of it will be premium obviously if you want to be generating um you know payment processing then at some point then you know maybe you want to pay for that content right that's only fake so um, that's what we're going to build, all right? So this is similar to like your Javas AI, those type of website, copy AI. I mean, it's not going to be exactly, exactly the same. And maybe you can expand on what I'm going to teach you to be more specific. Like, you know, if you want to do maybe long content writers like Javas, whatever I'm teaching you, you can expand on it and do stuff like that, all right? But I'm going to definitely do something that's very similar to paper type 
where, you can, where users can come and say, okay, I want a social media caption for Instagram and they click on it and it takes them to a page. They'll have to register an account and then you can, and then, you know, subscribe. And then, you know, maybe you measure how, you know, how much, you know, they produce and then you can like sort of uh, charge them or the, the packages can be based on, you know, the amount of words that they get out or stuff like that, you know? So I'm going to show you how to do all of that. Um, what's in here. Okay. So let's get started. Um, what you're going to need is we do, we're not doing this on a basic, um, we're not going to do this on a basic bootstrap template because uh, obviously you cannot like, you know, deploy that and have people pay for basic bootstrap. I'm going to show you a website on, um, that is called theme wagon that you can go to. So if you want to find theme wagon, you can just sort of Google for theme wagon like that. And you go there and, um, they've got, uh, templates, website templates that you can use. All right. So they do have premium templates, but you actually get free templates as well. All right. And these free templates are available to use for personal and commercial, um, you know, use. Okay. So it's not pirating. It's actually, they're supplied by the template developers. It's just that some of them, you have to keep the attribution and say, okay, this is template was developed by this person. You can't remove the attribution because you got it for free. All right. But I suppose for learning, definitely, um, that's what I'm going to do because I want you to be able to go through, um, this tutorial and follow me exactly without uh, having to, without it costing you much, except maybe for the servers, cause you can't get around that. If you want to build code, you have to build it somewhere. You can't build it for free, but uh, the things that I can get for free, I will definitely get you for free. All right. So the templates we're going to be working with today, I'm going to close that. The templates that we're going to be working from today are these two templates. Okay. There's one called Phoenix and there's another one called, um, Asha and both these templates, I will link in the description below so that you can be able to get them. Actually, I won't link the templates directly. What I will link is I will link this note. So I'm creating a note as we go along and everything that I write, I'm going to um, put in this note. So this will be like a nice tutorial note that you can follow later on and I'll make this available, you know. So if you look at this note, I'm developing it actually on my platform. Okay, this is Coco.io. It's a um, SaaS platform that I develop myself. So it's one of the companies that I run. Hence, I get so busy these days. I can't do tutorials as often as I like. But when I get a chance, like on Easter weekend today, I do do a tutorial. But um, this is one of the platforms that I've developed and, um, you know, so it has a note taking tool and I'm going to be writing the lecture notes in here, you know, and then once I've, I'm done with that, I will um, be able to share this link online. So if you see this link over here, um, I'm going to share this link with you, um, in the description of the video today. And if you go to this link, everything that I'm writing will be available on the link. Okay. So, um, you'll see the link here to the theme wagon will be there the link to the um, landing page and if we have a git repo i'll put the link here as well so all the useful links of what you need i will put in this note and then i will link this note to the video description because the last time i linked theme wagon directly in the video description i got a, a sort of an, an issue with youtube i don't know maybe they sort of it's one of the websites they i don't know they censor i don't know but so i will link it via a different note okay so that's the first thing um, so this to this um, um, uh, sort of um, templates that we're going to work with, um, let's just go through them, right? It's two different templates for a reason because um, we're going to have a landing page. So if you look at paper type, right, this is a landing page, right? This is like the front end. When you come here for the first time, this is pretty much what you see. So and then you'll have a login button at the top and then you can go to a login page, which is the authentication page. And then after that, you get into a different page, which is only accessible by members. All right. So that's where we're going to use our dashboard template. So our dashboard template is going to be the back end admin site where once people have logged in, then they're going to log into this part of their template. And then we're going to build our, you know, um, tools in here, you know, so if someone wants to write a blog, they'll be able to do it here. Somebody wants to write a Twitter post an Instagram post, whatever it is, a caption, a marketing thing they'll be able to do it from the uh, back end template and then they'll be able to like click over there and sign out. And when they sign out, it takes them back to, um, the, the landing page template. So we'll have a landing page that people can come to and read about the product, you know, so we'll have, okay, whatever we call our product, we'll have a, a product name there and description and people can read about what we do and some pictures and nice stuff. You know, we'll have even a pricing page. I think there's a pricing page here somewhere. Okay. We'll have a pricing page. We might not need a portfolio. So we'll re yeah, there's a pricing page. So we'll have a pricing a bit where we're going to show the different packages that we've got. Um, you know, maybe a free package where you only get like 
one or two a month, whatever, to test out the solution. So people can still log in on a free tier, for example, maybe you have a freemium you know, deal. But the moment they test out our system and they realize, hey, actually, you know, I like this thing. I want to produce more blogs. Then we then we'll charge them on the on the business plan where they can now start paying for that, you know. And then when, if they really want to do like lots and lots of blogs, then we have a, a different tier, you know. So we'll do something like that. And um, so the landing page will look similar to this. Of course, I'm going to change the content. I'm going to change the images because oh, this is a template. I can't, it can't look exactly like the template, but we'll use a template as a guide. All right. So this is really useful if you're a back end designer and you don't have the capacity to do graphic design, you know, and you don't have the money to go hire a graphic designer on Fiverr or whatever. You don't have a team, you know, if it was a, if you were in a dev house, you would have a team that would do the front end design for you. But if you're a back end designer and you just want to build something quickly, you go to places like this and you buy a template. And then when you get a template, then you sort of work with a template to build what you want and you still get a product out, but for the least affordable, you know, for the least cost. And with these free templates, actually, then it costs you nothing. Okay. So let's get through our notes and cover what we're going to do today. Okay. So I've covered the prerequisites. You're definitely going to need these templates. I'm going to put the, the links. Okay. So what you need to do is to go and um, once you get this link, you'll get to a page like this. You just click that download button. I think they ask for like your contact information, like your email address, because what, they, what, what, what happens is you don't download immediately. They will like send you a download link. Okay. Because they obviously want to confirm that you're a real person and they're going to send it to your email address. You're not a bot, you know, things like that, but it's perfectly safe. I've used this uh, a couple of times in the past. So you just basically click this link. It will send um, you an email. I'm not going to do it on camera because um, just get it ready for the next tutorial. Okay. So if you're watching and you're going to follow along with us, download this now and go through the process and then just save it some way. And the next time you're going to continue with that. Okay. And then there's the next one over here as well. Do this, the exact same thing. Download this and save it in a safe place. And then we're going to continue with it next time. Um, you know, um, when we um, catch up with it. Okay. So I'm going to close these for now. All right. And this is what the templates look like. Okay. I might leave that open for now. All right. So once we've done that, that's the first prerequisite. The second prerequisite is you're going to need a digital ocean account because we are going to code this on digital ocean. I'm going to show you exactly how, um, you know, to build this because we are building it for deployment. I'm going to show you how to, um, not just write code, but write code that you're going to be able to deploy and build an actual live app that sits on a domain that anybody can access and, and start paying you for the, for the service. Okay. So definitely, um, you're going to need to work off a server. Okay. There are many options, you know, um, that you can work with, you know, from, you know, uh, but I prefer digital ocean. I've worked with it for a long time and, um, you know, and it's very, it's one of the most affordable de uh, technically in my mind to work with. And it's very friendly towards beginners and, you know, and, and the startup community. That's why, um, you know, I've used it from the beginning. And the last prerequisite is a willingness to learn. Okay. So if you're here on this channel, you know, we are a learning channel. Okay. So I need you to have that willingness to learn. And I don't, I, what I don't, appreciate sometimes is to get comments on the uh, description like can you just you know give us the, the code uh, can you just show us where the code is and um, where can I find the code I, I've, I've got no issues sharing code okay but what I prefer is to take you through the process and and have you learn and code with me as I go along yes I might be going a little bit faster and then maybe things don't work out and then you want to use the code for reference you know, so maybe we'll make it available and maybe we'll only make it available for the premium um, clients. I don't know. But um, I, I, I'm, I'm of the opinion that if you're here to learn, um, I'm doing everything on camera. Right. So code with me. So if I say now I'm opening the Digital Ocean website, pause the video, go to Digital Ocean, open with me. So when I go to OK, now I am downloading um, this Python, you know, do exactly what I do when I say now I'm doing this follow along step by step. And if you get stuck at a step, then you can put a question and say, I got stuck at this step. Okay. And, um, I've also gotten recommendation questions around, let's do like some sort of discord group or, you know, and I think around that, you know, it's just that, you know, a very busy person and I probably won't be able to attend such a group anyway. Okay. So let's hope you can get as much as you can get out of the video tutorials and, and have a willingness to learn. Okay. When you get stuck, 
when you get stuck on something like let's say you're following exactly what I'm doing and you're getting an error that you can't seem to see you know the first point should not be for you to post a comment a question I got stuck here and copy and paste your error okay one 90 percent of the time I don't even respond to that anyway okay the first thing you should do is to open Google and copy and paste that error on Google Trust me, nine out of 10 times, you're going to find the exact same message posted somewhere like Stack Overflow and go and read um, what that person asked and then go and read the responses because 90% of the questions are, are responded to and answered. And that's how I learned coding. I'm self-taught developer, right? I used to follow tutorials, but I was getting stuck 60% of the time because things are different. The environment is different. I'm coding from a Mac, maybe you're coding from a different machine. You know, things are, are not going to always work out exactly. There are going to be places where we differ. And even if you follow step by step exactly what I show you, um, perhaps you still get an error. Okay. So, so, so before you email me that error, um, just go and Google the error and troubleshoot it yourself because that is the process of learning. That's how you learn. Even if you get stuck on a problem for a whole weekend, you'll never get stuck on that problem again because the next time you would have learned. And that's what is called experience. Okay. I've had, I have now years of experience coding, but that is how I got started. Okay. There's no shame in um, going to Stack Overflow, create an account in Stack Overflow. Nowadays, I actually respond to questions on Stack Overflow because I used to learn so much from Stack Overflow that I'm giving back. That when I come across a question that somebody that hasn't been answered, I will answer it. Okay. So post your questions on, on Stack Overflow. If you don't know what is Stack Overflow, this is Stack Overflow, right? You go there and um, it's this website that you can post like any coding question you've got, all right? Literally, you will get an answer to it. Okay, so create an account and uh, and also try to contribute if you can answer questions. Okay, so you know, get an account here, and this is the best place as a coder. This is the best place for you to get an answer. You know, so if you email me a, an error message, you you're not gonna get a response. But if you paste it here, you'll get a response within a day. Okay, from somebody way more experienced than I am, who is going to answer your question exactly, and they're gonna give you, and most likely before you even get to that point, you will find five more people who have asked the same question and you can look at how they solved their problem because you can read the comments and see, you know, and things like that. Okay. So definitely that is what something I want to mention. And let me put this in the notes as well. All right. I'm going to put it in here and say, you know, note on stack overflow. All right. For problem solving. Okay. So definitely do that. So I'm going to link this. I'm going to link Stack Overflow. I want you to go there, open an account, get used to, um, you know, get used to uh, speaking to people um, and, and, and having people helping you out with, with specific problems. Okay. So these guys will definitely help you. So definitely we've already covered that. I've given you an overview of what we're going to build. I've told you it's going to be a little bit like this is going to be like what the back end looks like. This is what our landing page um, is going to look like. All right. So that's covered. I've given you the note about Stack Overflow. Okay. There's the link over there. So go to Stack Overflow, open an account. And when you get stuck following this tutorial, copy and paste the error exactly. Even if you copy and paste it on Google, the first two or three responses are likely going to be from Stack Overflow anyway. So you can even just Google the error. And this is the error that I got. Just copy and paste that error directly into Google as you have it and you will get a response and I'll maybe demonstrate it to you um, later on. Okay. So let's get started. I've spoken enough. Um, let's get started with digital ocean. Okay. There is a link that I'm going to have on the notes um, there as well. This is an affiliate link. So if you go using the link on digital ocean, you will get a hundred dollars free credit. So you can literally test everything I'm teaching you for free. And, um, and hundred dollars, I mean, maybe that can last you two months, that two months they give you, it will definitely last you that until, and then if you don't like it, you can just stop using it and you're not going to pay a thing. But if you like it and you continue using digital ocean after that, then you'll start paying the normal cost. Okay. So, um, use that affiliate link. Otherwise, if you go to digital ocean directly yourself, you're going to pay from the first day. Okay. So, um, click on that digital ocean link. So I'm going to tick that. I'm not going to click on it because I already have a digital ocean account. So when you click on that link, go through the steps and create your account. Okay. 
So once you've done that, um, you're going to come to a page like this. Okay. So I've gone through the steps and I've created an account. So you will see, this is your navigation panel over here on digital ocean. And at the top, you've got some um, tools as well, you know, your account and you can see your cost. And what I like about digital ocean is they charge you per, they charge you like per minute or per hour or per day. Okay. So even though they coach you on a cost of, let's say like 10, $20 a month, um, you don't get charged upfront that whole $20 when you open an account. Okay. You actually get charged daily. So that $20 is broken down into a daily cost. And if you only create a droplet and you use it for one day and you cancel that droplet at the end of the day, you will pay like $1 or whatever it is, or even a couple of cents, just in that, whatever that prorated amount for the day is. So you can literally test things out for very minimal cost. This is why I love working with Digital Ocean. It's a good testing platform. It's a good learning. It's a good learning. That is why I use it for learning. It's a good learning thing because platform, because if you build something and you don't like it and you want to delete it and you remove it, you know, you, you literally pay for the day that you used it for. Or even if you use it for a week, you just pay for that week um, that you used it for. And then you delete it and then you go back to scratch. So... Um, so this is your navigation over there and over there, right? So under manage, you can like expand that a bit and you can then see all the different, uh, you know, sort of features or platform or things or tools that you can get on digital ocean, right? Towards the end of this tutorial, I'm, I'm very excited to demonstrate to you app platform because I think it's just one of the most exciting things digital ocean has, has done in the last couple of years. Um, it's definitely integrated with other, other parties, but but I'm going to show you this. Maybe it will be over the premium version, but I'm definitely going to show you how to then take whatever I'm going to build for you and deploy it on our platform because that's a production grade. Um, it's a production grade deployment site where you just deploy your code once and they manage everything for you from scaling to error management to, you know, to version control to, you know, redeploying your app every time this changes. I mean, they manage everything from, you know, like, you know, vertical, horizontal scaling, you know, so like if you get, if your, if your app is going to grow and get a thousand, a hundred thousand users, you know, they manage all of that for you. You don't have to worry about containerizing. And I might be confusing you right now, but when you build an application, um, there are different versions. And like what, what I'm going to show you now is a development version of the application. But once you finish developing it, we're going to need to deploy it. So we need to take it into production. And production is different because production has to manage certain things that you don't have to worry about in, 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 in development, including security and all of those kind of things that as a newbie, you might not have the team to help you. If you're a big company, you would have an entire department that's just worrying about app security. Another department that's just worried about you know, um, you know, uh, microservices and deployment and containers and all of those things. But you're a one, two man show. You, you don't have the capacity. So you end up not doing it. And then your app is insecure. It crashes all the time and da, 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 you know. So this is what app platform is made for. So I'll do this at the end, right? But um, what we're going to do today is we're going to do what we call um, droplets. Okay, so this is one of the first products Digital Ocean had. And what droplets are, they are like computers they are like a computer they like literally borrow you a computer to work with right um a virtual computer they call them virtual private servers okay so they give you like a virtual computer to work with you can write code whatever you want test it out you can delete it if you don't like it you know so that's what we're going to work with the code we're going to write today it's going to be a Django application. Let me clarify that. We are building a Django application. We're going to build it on a droplet or a virtual server from DigitalOcean. Okay, so that's where you want to start. So you can either click droplet over there or you can click create at the top. All right. But before you do that, let's start. You actually, you need to start by creating a project. Okay. So click new project first so that everything that you're doing is inside of a project. Okay. So create a project and call it whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Call it open AI, whatever you want to call it. And then within that project, so you'll have like different projects like this. Okay. Then you can go into that project and then you can then go to the top there and you can say create. Okay. So make sure you create it inside within of a project. So let me show you quickly how to do a project. So when you're here for the first time, click that button. All right. Then you're going to enter the project name. So I'm going to delete this later. So I'm just going to call it testing project. All right. So do as I do create that project. Uh, maybe you want to give it a description. All right, um, to be deleted soon. All right, and then what is this project for? I don't know. I'm just trying out Digital Ocean. Then you create a project. So once you've created it, there it is. You will immediately be taken to that project you just created. Okay, so now I'm inside of the testing project. You will get this question: create or remove resources. 
This is if you had like droplets from somewhere else within Digital Ocean and you want to allocate them to this project. But in this case, I'm going to be assuming you're starting from scratch. So let's just say skip for now, okay? And then you'll end up here where it says explore Digital Ocean, all right? So what I'm going to do now is in this specific case, I'm, I don't want this. I want to delete this project. Let me see. How do you delete this? Otherwise, I can delete it later. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the Scholar Online project that I created the first time. It has like nothing on it. It's very, fairly empty. So you can go at the top there and click create, right? So these are all the things you can create on DigitalOcean. So let's start with app, uh, not apps. We're going, to do not, we're going to do droplets, okay? Cloud servers. Droplet cloud servers. That's what we want, okay? So let's click on that. So once you've done that, you get a chance to choose the operating system. Okay, so we're going to be working with Linux Ubuntu. So it's already pre-selected, so don't worry about changing anything. Over here, these are the different versions of, of Linux Ubuntu. Obviously, you can still get up to 18, and then you do have a 21, but let's just leave it as the one that was pre-selected. We used 20.04. I've been using this for a while, and it works decent. And then you have different types of CPUs that you can work with, okay? So you get like a shared CPU, which is the basic one, which is I think is the cheapest one. And then you can get a dedicated CPU where they give you your own, you know, your own CPU. Your CPU is like the computer. So you get like one computer that's shared between multiple people. That's a shared one. Or else you get a, your own one and then you can choose whether you want a memory optimized or storage or whatever optimized, right? So this really depends on what you're trying to do, okay? For a Django application for development purposes, because we're going to do this for development purposes. At the end, we're going to move this to app platform anyway. And then they're going to manage all of this stuff for us. They want to manage all of these things. And we won't, we won't have to worry about all of that. But because we're doing development, I'm going to just go with the basic, the cheapest one. All right. And then when it gets here, then you can choose the size of the server as well. Like one gig, two gigs, two gigs. This is all different sizes. You know? And $48 is pre-selected. So be very careful. I'm going to take it back to regular SSD. And um, actually, maybe I can use a premium one. I don't mind because it's not that different because it will be a little bit faster. But I'm going to use the $6 one. Okay, so that's like the cheapest one over here. So for what we are doing, it's sufficient and for development. Okay, so this will work only in development. If you get to a point where now, like you wanted to like deploy this application, you definitely would want to go to the $48 or something more. But in our specific case, like I've already explained, once we finish developing this application, we're going to push it to app platform, which means that um, you know they'll manage all of that and then we'll just pay one, one fee for app platform. So for now, let's work with the cheapest version. The smallest version um, is sufficient, okay? And then once you've done that, then you get um, block storage. Just um, forget that. And then you get to choose a data center. This is pre-selected for me because I almost always choose Amsterdam. Um, this just depends on your preference, really. Okay, so if you're based in the U.S., um, obviously you want to choose, um, you know, either New York or San Francisco. I would pick the one that is closest to you in time zone. Okay, so if you're like on the more on the San Francisco time zone, then I would pick that. Okay, I'm in South Africa, so I'm closer to London and Amsterdam in time zone. Okay, so Anyone between these two would have been sufficient for me, all right? But with all the Brexit stuff, I'll go with Amsterdam, you know, because also another thing about this data center is once you've selected it, you can actually change it later, all right? And one thing to consider with data centers is also the legal implications of certain things, you know, like data. If you have a dispute with someone, so if like, um, you know, a client sues you for a data breach or whatever, you know, um, you're going to have to address all of those kind of situations um at the location the data is physically located you know so you also have to understand those kind of things so um amsterdam for me is the closest in time zone i don't know about the legal implications they hope nobody sues me for 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 anything um data breach or whatever and then when we get to this stage right um you need to select one of the two options let me go down a little bit and check and then we'll come back up okay all right. So authentication, SSH keys or password. All right. So what you need here for security purposes, you need to work with SSH keys. Right. But I will go for the password option and I'll tell you why. The password option is the least secure option, specifically because of 
the security issues involved with the password so it means that people can easily crack or you know um um you know what's the word they can easily sort of like um you know, um, you know, get into your application, you know, hack it, whatever. A password is easy to hack. It doesn't matter how difficult you've made the password, okay? But I'm going to pick the password because we are in a development server. And um, to save you time and going through this, the complications of SSH, you know, um, you know, I'd rather, you know, for this tutorial, we'll just make keep it simple. However, on my YouTube channel, okay, so let's go there quickly. On my YouTube channel, if you go over there and you search for my channel, let's go online and you go into um, the channel there and you go into the videos. All right. I've got a video over here where I show you how to set up SSH keys on a digital ocean. Um, I think it's 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 this one. All right. OK, this tutorial is one and a half hours long, right? One hour, 37 minutes. This tutorial is just showing you, you can see here how to create a virtual server, set up SSH keys, set up a firewall, install Git, install Nginx, Python set bot, and move files to VPS, all right? So this is quite involved tutorial, but it covers the sort of the admin backend little things that you need to know when you're working with a virtual server. You know, things like SSHing, things like firewalls because for security, you know, things like in Jinx, which you use for the, you know, to, to deploy later on, all those kind of things. So that when you watch the rest of my tutorials, I don't have to do this at the beginning of every tutorial. Otherwise, if I had to show you everything, I would have to do all of this at the beginning of every tutorial, and that will take too long. My tutorials will end up being 10 hours long. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just link this for you, okay? I'm going to link this for you again inside of our notes okay so i'll put it inside here dish, dish, dish. i'll put this in and i'll call it um um setting up ssh keys um you know um vps on digital ocean etc etc okay so this is like it's an hour it's an hour long tutorial Okay, so this note thing of mine, actually, it takes the entire video, which is nice. Can I make this smaller? Mm, it's all right. Anyway, so when you get to the notes, let me show you. So this is my online note. This is where I'm saving it. Okay, so I'm going to just refresh this page and see what that video looks like. Okay, the video is not doesn't come through over here. So I don't know how to do this, that the video link comes through and not the embed of the video because I don't want you not to um, oh, come on I can't get it to not um, do that all right that's all right so maybe what I'll do is that um, I will I will I will put the video in um, video link in the description of YouTube video all right, so I'll put the video link in the description of the YouTube video because I can't edit here. Um, every time I edit, it embeds the video instead, and then you can actually see it on the other side because I was just testing that to make sure that you would be able to see it over here, and you can't, you know. So pff, let me leave it like that. Okay, coolio. So let's do that. Okay, so definitely watch this video. You'll figure out how to get started with SSH. So I'm going to close that for now. And where are we? So I'm going to do a password. All right. So the password must be eight characters, one uppercase, two, 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 one number. Cannot end in a number or a special character. Let's see. I'm going to forget this password. Already done. Okay, let me type it again. Make sure I got the right one. Because if if I forget this password, I will have to lose this entire droplet. Okay, there's no other way. All right, I got it. 
So it contains all the requirements there. That's fine. Uh, backups. Ugh, I'm not going to pay for backups now. Like I said, this is um, this is really um, we can do monitoring and IPv6 because that's free um, user data. Mm, enter user data when you create. No, 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 that's I don't need that. All right. So um, that's it. Um, this is a development server, so I'm not going to do the backups, but if this was a real VPS you're using for something really important and you were going to, uh, and you were going to deploy your site on this VPS, I would highly recommend you have backups. Okay. But because I'm going to deploy this on app platform, I'm not worried about that. Okay. And over here is where you want to give it a name. Okay. So I'm just going to call it scholar online. All right. I'm going to call it scholar online and then you can have tags and then, and then click that. To create the droplet all right so um, I don't need to update any password let's just give it a chance Okay, so as soon as your droplet has been provisioned, your virtual machine has been provisioned, you will see over there the IP address. Okay, so just copy it because we need to access it via the terminal. So you can access it via the terminal of your computer from anywhere. You just have to SSH into it. This is where the SSH keys come in because that simplifies that whole process and it's definitely way more secure. And then you can disable password login. But in my case, because I'm using password, I'm just going to stick to that. All right. So I'm going to go over there and uh, find your terminal. Is it, is this, is it here? Why is it so far away from my site? Okay. So this is my terminal. Oh, I know why it is so far away. Okay. I put it there for a reason. All right, so what you all you need to do is um, I've copied that uh, IP address like that. All right, so um, what you need to do on a terminal window, you just sort of type SSH and this works only in Mac. So if you're using um, Windows and you're following along with Windows, there is a tool that you need to install that's called uh, Putty, I think. All right, uh, Putty for Windows. All right, so download party. So, um, and tell net. So I'm going to like click this link over there and maybe put it in the notes for you as well. Okay. And, and sort of just like, um, say, you know, um, if you are on windows, okay, download party here for SSH connections, okay? And I can't go through the process of showing you how to use it, okay? You can Google this, Google how to use it, figure it out, go to Stack Overflow if you have problems, you know, part of learning and development is taking the ability, time to go and teach yourself certain things, okay? So I won't always show every single little thing. So if you're on Windows, you're gonna need Putty, to um, be able to SSH into the thing, but there's lots of video tutorials on how to use Putty for SSH. So you can check those ones and then figure out how to do what I'm doing on Mac. Okay. So once you figure out what I'm doing, it's I'm going, I'm, I'm now connecting into my virtual machine from my computer via the command line, via the, um, the, 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 you know, the, 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 the command line. Yes. So, um, so you're going to do SSH and then you SSH your, your username. Okay. So every time a droplet gets created, there's always a root user. Okay. So root is always the, um, the default user, but, um, you're going to need to then create a different, um, user after root. Okay. So I'm going to do SSH root, um, at, so this is the user at this machine. Okay. So I copied something else. So let me go and find my VPS, um, IP address again. All right. So this is root at this VPS uh, machine. All right. So um, once you've done that, you just click enter. 
and it's going to look for that and it's going to ask oh i'm logging into this machine for the first time do you trust this i'm okay i can just just type yes over there um and then you have to enter the password this password is the password you created for your machine because now you're logging in using a password okay if you had done ssh keys it will just automatically log you in via the keys on your machine so i'm going to type in my password there right and then it's going to log me in all right and you can see over here i'm now root at scholar.online scholar.online is the name that i gave the vps when i was creating it so whatever name you give it that is the name that's going to show up there all right so at this stage i am a root super user okay you can't do everything as a root super user in fact it's not advisable you need to create a secondary user for yourself you know like in your machine like in your, in your in your macbook whatever machine you work with there's always user profiles okay so you're going to create a user profile that you're going to be working and delivering from and then if you have multiple people in your business in your department in your company you can create a user profile for everyone okay so i'm going to um create a user uh i'm going to say um let me just double check all right um, I don't know why this is escaping me. I do this all the time. And then when I need it, it's just it's just in the in the tip of my mind and it's gone. All right. So I'm going to say I'm going to go again and, and I'm going to search digital ocean. I'm going to say, you see, I had an error doing something on digital ocean and I just Googled it and, and saw the solution. So this is something else. I'm not doing this now. Um, digital ocean, I'll create um, digital ocean droplet setup. Okay. All right, there's a nice tutorial on this initial server setup. So maybe I'll put this as well in the link for you guys so that you can see this as well. So once you've done all of this, um, I'm going to say digital ocean um, initial server setup tutorial. Okay. And I'll put that link over there and you can go there and double check it and do it and check everything I'm doing here. But basically what you need to do, there's a command I'm looking for here. You've already SSH into your thingy. Yeah, add user. So that's what I'm looking for. Okay. So you're going to add a user as your as yourself. All right. And um, so let's go over here and we're going to say add user from the root. And what are we going to call ourselves? I'm always, I always call myself um, um, Scolo, but today let me, let me use that. Okay. Add user um zatosh all right and once you've added a user it's going to ask you for a password okay so let's enter a password there okay and enter the password again all right and full name just ignore those things just say enter it's correct all right yes okay all right so once you've done that you can actually exit from here right which means it takes you back to your macbook pro you have disconnected from that machine right now you're in back in your in your home um, um, computer that you started from and then this time you can ssh the user you just created right uh no yeah so ssh okay let's yeah yeah, so you can SSH instead of SSH Zatosh. No, what are we doing here? Zatosh at, let's find that VPS um, IP number. All right. Zatosh at that. Okay. And this time um, it will ask you for your password. It's the new password you created for the new user, not your root password. So now you've got two users on this machine. You had a. Um, you know, a root user, and then you had a Zatosh user. Okay, so now you're going to enter the Zatosh password. Okay. And then it's going to log you in, right? So you can see now you are now Zatosh at online. Okay, I'm going to exit again because I need to now grant myself. Um, super user access as Zatosh because I'm going to be doing everything. I'm technically the root, but so I'm going to grant myself all the permissions and access as a super user. So I need to add myself into the super user group. Okay. So let's go through the tutorial and, and go down a little bit and you'll see over here. Um, dish, dish, where is it? Um, where is it? Where is the command to add? Um, Add user. 
and uh, rent a strong password and uh, the next step is set up pseudo privileges for the user there you go it's this one over here okay so this is the command okay so um let us then first of all um copy back our ip and go back as root in fact we should have done this before so now we enter the root password all right and then we're going to run that command to grant a zatosh a super user um rights okay so it's basically user mode ag sudo and then you say zatosh okay there you go like that so once you've done that that's all you need to do so you can exit and then you can now ssh as zatosh at the ip and this time you will have super user access perfection and you can test that by running a sudo command all right so you can run a sudo i don't know sudo um something okay you can't you gotta you got do something i don't know we'll get to a sudo command later and then we will test that we have sudo 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 access that's pretty much all you need to do hey eh? so once you're done with that we're gonna let's go back to our checklist because i think the next step is to now install python django everything so we can get our application running and get the environment ready right so we've covered um okay there's our notes okay we've uh set up the environment i mean we've done digital ocean and um, now we need to set up the environment. And there's a link over here as well. Um, a scholar online documents getting started with Django Ubuntu. So this takes you to this page. So check that link out. I don't know why it's not turning blue. But basically, when you get to this link, this is the page for that link. Um, there are steps to follow over here to set up your Django um, website. Okay. So basically, this is the steps that I'm going to be following here. Okay. So let me actually put this closer there so that I can follow them um, uh, closer. So now when you're here, normally what I do is that I, um, I create a folder that I'm going to be working from. Okay. I'm going to call it development and I'm going to CD into that folder. Okay. So what this command is doing is that MKDIR creates a folder. Okay, so I'm going to create a folder I'm calling that. And then I'm going to um, and CD into that folder. Okay, and CD into that folder. So CD is just, you know, move into the folder, right? So you'll see now I'm inside of the development folder. I just created it and I moved into it. Okay, LS lists everything that way you ask. So right now, there's nothing where I am, right? So I'm going to, again, MKDIR. I'm going to create another folder because I like to always have development if i have other things you know that is not development i'll put it in in the other folders but um instead of development then i can have my specific projects so you can have multiple projects in one virtual server so that's the nice thing about a virtual server you could have two three four five i've got servers with like 10 different django applications in one server so that's possible so inside inside of the development i'm going to create now another folder which is just for this django project so i'm going to say mkdir i'm going to call this what do we call this? Let's give it a name. Let's give it a name. We're going to call it Garabo. Okay. Let's call it Garabo. MKDIR Garabo. And we're going to CD into it. Okay. CD into Garabo. All right. So now we are sitting in Garabo. This, we're going to call this project Garabo. By the way, Garabo is a Tswana word. Tswana is, is my uh, ethnic language. It's a Tswana word that means answer. So Karaba stands for answer. So the application I'm building is going to have all the answers, right? That's why I've decided to call it Karaba. I actually already bought a domain for Karaba and I'm going to actually load this on Karaba and I'm going to build, I'm building an application. I'm literally going to load and I'm going to launch and I'm going to charge people for using and I'm showing you exactly how I built it. So you can build it as well if you like. So the app I'm building today, I will launch, I will go live with it. I will charge people for using it and, um, you know, um, it will be a real, it's going to be a real world life application. And I think in YouTube, you're not going to find another YouTube channel. 
another YouTube channel that is going to build for you an application that went live. There's nobody that has built a live working application that shows you exactly how they did it on YouTube. So this is the first. So guys, keep subscribed and check all the videos. Um, I will launch this app and it will be a real live app when I'm done with it. And I'll probably even keep you updated as to how much money I'm making off of it, if you like. So let's clear this. And now we are here on Carabo. We are going to, there's a couple of things we need to do. Um, we need to go into our working folder. Okay, so I like to structure my things in a certain way. I'm going to um, create some directories. Yeah, I'm going to create a repo. This is where my Git repo is going to be. I'm going to create a working folder like that, right? And so I'm going to have two folders. So if I ls over here, I've got, this is going to be my working folder. I'm going to work from there and I'm going to have the repo. So I want the repo to be outside of the working folder because when I um, have Git and move things into the, so this repo is going to manage sort of the files that go in there. You know when I'm working with Git and and, and it's going it's outside of the of the of the files that I'm managing inside of the Git repo, so that's why I'm doing it like that. But I don't know. You can give me comments and you can let me know how you do it and we can you know we can see. So now I'm gonna go into the process of installing Django, right? So the first thing that we do is obviously update our packages. Okay, so update. Um, So our sudo command is working, so we're good to go. Now, this URL I have linked over there inside of the notes. And these notes, I'm going to share with you the link, okay? So later on, when you follow along, you'll be able to like pretty much do everything I'm doing, okay? Oh, I see why this is. So it's like, this is like another, so this is a problem here. So let me not... Why does this feel like it's one? Okay. Let me paste this. There you go. That's better. And then if I refresh it over here, that's better. But it's still in a different line. I don't know why, why that is. Hmm. It's all right. So anyway, um, this is now, um, so this is the next step. So we've covered all of these steps. We're going to be going through this tutorial. Now we are over here. So over here, this is the link. And if you click that link, it will take you to this page. So this is the page that I'm following. Okay. So let's just, um, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to install Python 3 pip. By the way, the digital ocean droplet comes already with Python pre-installed and you can check this very quickly by doing, um, which Python. All right. No, not which Python. Uh, Python a uh, version. Hmm. Oh, I think it's Python three. Okay, Python three version. There you go. We've got Python three point eight point ten um, already pre-installed inside of the virtual server. If you wanted to upgrade to a different Python version, you can. But Python three point eight is pretty sufficient for what we need. So you can see that Python is already uh, pre-installed. So we're not going. To, we don't need to install Python, but we need to install the pip Python three pip and all of the other development tools for that. Okay. So I'm gonna copy all of that. Just paste it as it is, and just give it some time um, to run. Okay. And I'm gonna say yes for that. And that's it. Okay, so once it's doing that, um, the next thing we're going to do is set up our, our, our database. All right. So, um, but let's wait for it to finish because we can't um, set it up before we finish. So you might be wondering, okay, why, why am I doing all of this? I have already mentioned that these are the applications we are going to build, right? And I've mentioned that I'm going to be using Django. 
So Django is a web framework that works with Python. So if you've been watching my video, my channel for, for some time, you do understand that I work with Python a lot. And um, and, and then I get questions, oh, do this in, in JavaScript. And maybe I will do another tutorial for this in JavaScript. But Python, honestly, for what we want to do and um, the ease of working with Django and, you know, managing, I mean, authentication, that kind of stuff. Um, being able to like easily just code that into your application, easily just being able to, you know, to build a web app in like a couple of minutes, right? Um, Django comes, um, they call it battery included, batteries included, you know, or, you know, the tool for perfect, perfectionists with a deadline. So it is extremely um, efficient uh, web uh, platform for that is well put together that you don't need to do a lot of you know boilerplate coding yourself because a lot of the things you need are pre you know they pre-exist in the packages already inside of Django that is why I use it and I do a lot of those tutorials on this channel because otherwise it would take us um six months to build this application that I'm going to show you pretty much how to do it in a couple of weeks and if we were doing it full-time really we could have done it in maybe two weeks or less, you know. So Django, you can work with it very, very quickly, and um, it's extremely efficient, and it is production grade. Some of the best websites are built on Django. You know, on my notes over here, I talk about it even when I start. Your Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, Dropbox, Pinterest, Instagram, watch, these websites are built on Django. So Django is an extremely efficient framework um, that you can work with very, very quickly. It, it, it puts together your application, you know, almost instantly and uh, it comes batteries included. You just have to like, just get the components that you need um, to sort of work with. Okay. So I was just sort of buying time there. I see um, it has finished um, installing. Then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up our database. Okay. So maybe before we set up our database, let's set up our virtual environment. Oh, let's set up the database first. Let's do the database first. Okay. So let's, let's do the commands. Maybe there's a reason why I have it in this order. So basically what this do Postgres also is probably, um, a part of this. Um, actually you did install it over here. Uh, Postgres SQL part of this, um, installation things that you have there one of them is postgres so you have it already installed and postgres is a production ready database that we're going to be working with so even though we are in the development mode right now right we're going to do our development mode with our production grade database because we want to integrate into it already you know and by the time we move it to a platform later on um it will be a quick plug and play of just you know exchanging the the login credentials of, of this uh, production slash development database with whatever that we will create from the, you know, the app platform, you know. So building it like this just makes the deployment easier later on. We don't have to then redo, you know, the database again. So we will only basically just replace the username and passwords when we get to that stage, you know. So let's run that command. And what, it, what that command does is that it logs you into the Postgres. You see you were now on the command line for the machine. Now you're inside the database itself. Okay, so what we're going to do inside of the database now is we are going to create a new database. We're going to then create a user for that database and a password for that user and, and set up some rules and then make sure that you record the password and everything for that database because um, that's what we will need um, inside of our Django application later on. Okay, so... Um, the, these are the commands you have to do. Don't copy all of them at once. Okay. You must run them one at a time and, um, don't just use the names that I give you because, um, you know, use the, use what, use different, do use whatever name makes sense to you. Okay. So I'm going to call my database scholar. It doesn't mean you have to call it scholar. You could call it something else. Okay. You could call it something that makes sense to you but I'm just going to call it Scolo. What this line does is that it creates a database inside of Postgres SQL and it calls, it gives that database the name Scolo. Okay. You might be wondering what a Scolo means. Scolo is, stands for school in our language. Escarabo stands for answer. Scolo stands for school. So that's done. It's created the database. It will uh, respond. If there was an error, you would have seen an error response. Okay. Um, what is the password for, for the database? Um, I'll just go with password. It's fine. It's a development database for now. I will change it later. There's not going to be any use, any sort of like, you know, nuclear codes or whatever in there. 
So um, after that, I'm going to then um, create a, a, a role, a user. Okay, no, this is what creates the user, sorry. This creates the user and gives it that password, okay? So the password, it, this, the database can have multiple users that can access it. So you could typically work off the same database with multiple applications and create multiple users accessing the database, maybe give them even different permissions based on what those users are, it's possible. So now what we're doing is that we created one user and we gave it that password called password. So this password you must change, by the way to a password that is not gonna be easy to remember. And I'll show you later on, Django has got a built-in password generator. I'll show you how to use it. And you can perhaps generate a more complex password to use for your database later on. But now in development, it's fine, we'll use password. And later on, we'll change it, okay? So now we're gonna um, set the encoding of that user to UTF-8, that's all right. I'm um, gonna send set the transaction to um, read committed. By the way, everything I'm doing now, you you might be, your when you copy and paste this, you might not. You you might have to copy and paste and edit some things, right? So you need to understand what is the code doing. Um, don't just copy what you see in front of you. Understand what it's doing, all right? So this first line of code creates a database called Scholo. If you wanted to call your database something else, change this name to something else. This one creates a user called Scholo user and with that password, you definitely must change this password to a different password. And you might want to call your user something else. Maybe you want to call your user Zartosh, the same name you give yourself, right? Then this one, whatever you call the user there, the role that you're altering must be for that user, right? And over here, we are altering the role again to read committed, okay? So when you copy these lines of code, Understand what's behind you. So if you're changing something, you know what you need to change in the code. And then finally, we're going to set the time zone, all right? So you might be in a different time zone. And obviously, you want to set your Django application to be in your time zone, you know? And the default is always UTC, UTC which is like the standard time zone, which most people understand. Or in, in Africa, we call it GMT. But um, Africa, I want to set it into my own time zone because when I'm doing things and I have tasks, I've scheduled and things like that, I need to know what time is really running in my time zone. So this is, this is a preference. It's up to you. And make sure whatever the time zone you set here, make sure it corresponds with your time zone you have inside of your Django application because in your Django application, you, there is also the capability of setting the time zone and making your application time zone away. We'll get to that later, okay? But um, just note that um, this should be it should match the time zone inside of your Django app and definitely a time zone that makes sense to you, the developer. Right. Then once you've done that, you want to grant all privileges, write, read, write, you know, so this is where if you had another user that maybe shouldn't have write privileges, you would manage it here, you know, but we're going to be the only user in this database and our application must have all the, the privileges. So I'm going to just leave it like that. And then finally, we're going to log out. So this one just logs you out, all right? And then we're good. We are back to our Django. So we've set up our database. Our database now exists with that password, all right? So now we can get into installing Django. So what we're gonna do now with installing Django is that we are going to, um, first of all, um, upgrade a pip. Remember this pip3 is the one that we have over here, uh, Python3 pip, okay? So um, we just copy that line over there and paste it in there. And it's just going to um, uh, upgrade it. And then, um, then we can now install virtual ENV, All right? So let's install that. Virtual ENV is a package that allows you to create virtual environments to work from. I know this is te technically a development environment and we're probably not gonna build another app on this droplet. But um, it's just good practice in Python. Just get used to always building your apps within virtual environments because then later on you can like do pip freeze and things like that and you can get your things inside the environment and use it when you're deploying your apps in other places, containers, you know, things like that, okay? So you'll know exactly what's inside this virtual environment, even specifically the versions that was installed and things like that. So always try to work within a virtual environment. Now, if you list here, 
you'll see there's no virtual environment over there. So what we're going to, I mean, we've installed the package for virtual environment, but now we actually have to create the environment using that package. So now that's what we're going to do now. We're going to say, uh, I think I'll call it Scholo ENV. I, what, what did I call my app? Carabo. Okay, I'll call it Carabo ENV. All right, not Scholo ENV. So this virtual ENV is the one we just installed there. Um, so we're going to say virtual ENV and we're going to call this Carabo. Carabo ENV, it's going to create an environment. It's, an environment is just a folder, really, where it's keeping all your Python packages. So um, it's going to do that, and everything went well. So if you list here again, you'll see there's a new folder here called Carabo ENV. This is your virtual environment. So you need to activate it before you can do anything, because now all the packages we want to build will be inside of this virtual environment. So what we do here is that we, we need to say um, source. Um, Garabo ENV bin activate, right? So what this does is that it activates its environment, and then you'll see the environment activated like that at the at the beginning with the you know inside of brackets. That means you're inside of the environment now. Now we can start installing Python packages or pip packages, and inside the environment we can just use pip. We don't even have to go back to pip three because that is the pip of inside, and you can even just use Python. We don't have to say Python three because it's a Python that's active in the environment. Okay. Cool. Now we can get ready for our Django application. Okay. So now we need to install Django. All right. So let's install Django. We need to install this thing they call Cyclop GP2. This is um, a package that's going to help you interface with your database. So it's very important. If you don't install it, you're going to get an error as soon as you run your app. And I think you also want to install G Unicorn. Um, we don't need it now. We're going to need it later when we deploy the application. So maybe we shouldn't install it now because maybe we won't even deploy the application here. Because remember, we said we would deploy it in the app. We said we would deploy it inside of the app platform. Okay, so let's not install GUnicorn for now. But technically, if I was building an app which I was going to deploy in the exact same location I'm building it, if it was in a virtual environment, I was going to deploy it in the same virtual environment, I would have also installed GUnicorn. Okay, and you can just install GUnicorn like, like that. It's a production grade, um, you know, uh, way to run your application. Sort of what, yeah, with, yeah. So let, let's just install those two and that's okay. Okay, successfully installed. Now we can start working with Django. All right. So Django admin start project, you're gonna give your project a name, all right? So this is where you do that. Okay, so let's see. Um, I'm going to delete this folder called Carabo. Okay. Remove. So to delete a folder, just use remove. If it's a folder, you use minus R in the name of the folder. If it was a file, you just say remove in the file name. And if you list again, you'll see it's just the environment and wrapper because I want to create the Django project because when you create a Django project, then it creates the folder anyway. So I'm going to call the folder Carabo so that it creates it for me. So what I'm going to do is Django admin start project Carabo like that. Start project um, Carabo. It will create a project called Carabo in this location we are at right now. All right, so you, you don't see much, but if you list suddenly, you can see we are inside of a, a there's a location in there. And if you actually cd into Carabo now, and you list, um, in a list, everything that's in here, um, you'll see you've got a folder called um, Carabo, and then you've got manage.py. If you cd into that Carabo folder again, you'll see there's other things, you know, like um, list list minus L. You'll see the you know the settings, the pure URL. So you got your pretty much your Django application running in here. Okay, so I'm gonna list out of that. Okay, let's clear so you can see. Let's list. You will see now you've got a folder called Carabo and you've got a folder called manage.py. And I think I tried to explain it in here. Alright. So 
I think what I did here was to name it two different things so that, you know, you don't get confused. Now that I've named everything Karabo, it feels like I'm inside of a Karabo instead of another Karabo and there's another Karabo. So you need to, it's going to confuse you. But basically what happened, we were here initially. And then we ran this command. And this command created this folder and, 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 and that file. Okay. This ENV was also there where we were. So we were inside of this folder, which had the folder called Scholo inside. No, no, we we're inside of this folder called Scholo. And there was um, a, a virtual environment in a repo, right? Which I'm not showing here. Then after I ran the command, it created this folder, which is the exact name of the command that I ran. And then it created this app, manage.py. So it created this folder and this app. And this app is where your Django application really lives. And inside of this app, this folder, I mean, inside of this folder that it created, you got your, you know, your settings, your URLs and all sorts of other things. Okay. So that's all you need to know for now. Come back to this note and just familiarize yourself with this folder structure. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to, um, you know, set up, you need to set up the databases and all of those things inside of your um, um, settings.py. So what you can do is that from where you are right now, right? The settings.py file is inside of this folder. Okay. So it's inside of this second folder that was created when you ran this, this command. So you can literally open it from here and you can say nano, um, you know, Caravo, um, this folder and inside of that folder, open settings.py. Okay. And then this is what's inside of the settings with py file. It's a nice instructions, you know, and, and, and so forth. And the first thing you need to do definitely is to change your secret key. But for now, I'm not worried, too worried about that because, um, we are in development mode. Okay. So one of the things I definitely want to do now is to set the allowed hosts to, um, a star. Actually, what you need to do here is you need to say, um, you know, it, you, this allowed host must match the IP that you're in right now. Okay. So if you go back to there, I think you can copy that IP that you've got and paste it in there. All right. And then I think you can also like put in, in a local host in there. All right. And then, yeah, I think that's okay. Or you can put the, let me see what's inside of my notes. I don't say anything about what to do with it, with it, with it. So I'll just put in that domain. That will be sufficient. Okay. So once you've gone past that, leave debug to true because we are still debugging. But as soon as you're going to, we'll go live. We need to, you know, uh, uh, change that into false. And, um, so this is the, um, the databases you'll see, um, by default, it comes with the SQLite 3 database. It will create an SQLite 3 database for you, which is the development database. Okay. We don't want that. Okay. What we want is we remember we already created our own, um, you know, um, database. So we need to just remove all of this. Let me just check. Yeah. Just remove everything. And then we're going to paste the code that is inside of these nodes that I have for you because this is the database that we need to use. All right. So just copy this and, and paste it in there like that. Okay. So what are we doing here? The first thing we are doing is that we're saying the engine, the engine is always going to be the Postgres SQL cycle G2. This is that package we installed when we installed Django. Remember then the name of the database is this one. Remember we called it database. If you called your database, something else, change this name to whatever the name you called your database. Okay. The whatever you, name you gave your user and the password, just change all of that and you can leave localhost and the port empty. All right. Then once you've done that at the bottom of the page, uh, make sure you just copy this and you paste it at the bottom of the page is just to um, direct to, to the static folder. I think you've got it in there. Let's just make sure we don't replicate. All right. So um, there is one in there. You just need to um, also mention what the static root is is okay then um once you've done that let's see what else is in the notes um we can run migrations and run the django app and then create a super user all right and then we can double check everything okay but before we do any of that 
Um, I just want to show you some high level, like, you know, installations that I normally do. So this is uh, all you need to get your jungle up running is up to here. But, you know, from experience, for example, these are the packages that I generally end up using in almost all of my jungle projects. So I've just got them here for you so that you can remember and reference. Pillow is used for image processing. So every, if you're going to use an image field, an image field inside of your jungle application, which we might not use at this stage, I don't think we'll be uploading any images, maybe a profile image. I don't think it's necessary. Then you would use pillow. Django resize is for Im resizing images. Crispy forms is for creating forms. This will definitely use. So I'm going to definitely install that. So let me close this. Yes, save the buffer. All right, so I'm definitely, we definitely go. Uh, what's that? Okay, so I want to copy the crispy forms. So we're definitely going to be working with uh, crispy forms. So let that install. Um, Nampi, I don't think we will, and HTML to text, we won't, we want to use tiny MCE either and channels and radius. We're not going to use that either. Okay. So then let's go back to, um, make migrations provided you install the database correctly. Then the mic migration commands should run your first migration without an issue. Okay. So let's run it. Okay. Operating system is not defined. Yes, I know. I know. I need to put this at the top of my settings dot um, py file. Okay, so let's clear this and let's reopen that file. So I'll just open it from here by saying nano um, caravo settings dot py. No settings.py okay and then at the top there where we're importing everything let's just make sure we import import os right then we can run our migrations there's no changes then um we then we can run migrate Right, and you run your initial uh, database migrations, um, uh, and everything went okay, so the database is installed properly. Okay, so once you've done that, then you need to um, create a super user. This is very important for your Django application, so that you can sort of you know be able to log into the admin panel. So let's let's set that up. All right, create super user, and then once we've done that, um, we're gonna put in the username for that super user. So um, I'm gonna use my email address. Okay, you use whatever email address that is useful for you. Use it, even use a name if you like. But as to not confuse myself with my Django application, I always use the username field also as an email field. You know, so that people when they log in with their username, they actually enter their email and they don't have to remember a username and an email. I hate those applications where I've got a different username to an email address. So I'll use that. And then the email address, I can just enter the same again. And then the password enter it again and then you're sorted okay so you've got your username and your password and you can then collect static all right um, all right so they've moved those to the static folder all right so if you do ls now you will see there's now a folder called static and if you cd into static all right um and you list in there you'll see the admin because admin is the only application that's built right now so when you build more applications and you got more static files that you're going to be using you will put them inside of the static folder all right so let's clear that and then let us um i haven't put in a firewall but if you had put in a firewall you would need to run to run this okay so what i'm going to do now i'm just going to run on on 5000 and um we ran without a hitch so if we go into our um you are into our uh, you know ip address over there we say http 
and you paste that and you go into port 5000 you should see your jungle application there um is that it um Did I put HTTPS? I don't know. So let me use a different port over here. Let me put 8,000. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, let's just clear this. And start at the top. All right, so let's copy that again. And I want to use 8,000 instead of 5,000. All right, it's running. HTTP 8,000. All right, so then I go get my IP address from there, right? And I do HTTP, right? Not HTTPS. And I do port 8123. There you go. There's our Django application up and running, okay? So this is what we're gonna take this and build this in next week's video because our video is already one hour, 20 minutes long. So I'm going to end this video here. And next week, maybe I will start with, yeah, next week we definitely, let's do that next week. So before we even do authentication, we're just going to take what we see here and build this and obviously with our information and everything so definitely make sure you check out the notes at the bottom of the tutorial make sure that you get your themes uploaded and installed into your machine okay not installed but like uploaded into your machine and downloaded whatever so that you can follow along with us next week when we continue because next week i want us to have this done and maybe the previous next week we'll do authentication and then after that we'll then uh tie into our back end and then we will start doing amazing things so maybe we we'll do this in about three to four weeks time but before you before i i you know sort of um sign off let me just keep you guys interested so that you definitely don't forget to turn on those notifications. So um, now we definitely know that our app is running. We've tested it. Um, so next week, we're going to pull the Django project because now what's happening here, we're working off the virtual server and it's difficult to type from here. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use Git to pull this code into my machine. And then I'm going to work off of my machine and pushing to the virtual server. Okay, so that's what we'll start with next week. And then we will um, install the code editor to work with. So this sort of work together. Then we know we'll do the landing page. Okay, so definitely we're going to start with the landing page. So I mean, next week we'll do up to there. And then after that, we'll do the authentication. And then we'll start to integrate the OpenAI API into that. And then do the tasks. And then we'll do, you know, eventually once we have the account system set up, that's part of the um, Django backend stuff which is um, the Jacob back and, you know, the, the profile model, you know, so the, a user can have a profile, a user profile, so you can keep track of their profile information, their username, their password, their profile picture, their account, have they paid, are they subscribed, da, 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 da. We're going to build a profile model then for all of those kind of things. And then we can then integrate payment processing so that when they pay, you can keep track of their payment and you can collect the money via uh, something like Stripe or PayPal. Maybe we'll do PayPal, okay? Because I think PayPal is easy for everybody. Um, Stripe might be a bit, um, um, you know, high grade for people. And I, and, and I think anybody can get a PayPal account. Um, and, and whatever, whatever I show you on PayPal, it will be the same thing on Stripe. It's just a different API. And then after that, we're going to deploy the, we're going to deploy the website and then we're going to deploy it on app platform. I'm really excited about this because the first time I'm going to demonstrate how to do this on app platform, I've been playing around with it for a couple of weeks now. And I think I'm ready to definitely show you guys on a video tutorial because I love what they've done with um, the app platform. And um, so what I wanted to note as well, and I'm just going to be upfront about this, there are going to be sections of this tutorial that I will mark as premium, okay? And by premium, I mean you will have to pay for those sections, you know? Um, I will show you 
as much as possible but i can't show you everything because i also have to make a living all right and for these premium sections what we'll do is that i will put those two video tutorials in our scholar online website okay so um let's do that um learn more at um https scholar.online all right and then you'll be able to go over there and um let's just open the the the, the website somewhere else let's open it here um scholar.online not the documentation site just the main site this is our online learning website and i do have some courses in here that are paid for i've got free courses and i've got paid for courses i will add the extra uh, parts in here um you know so that i can also uh, make my living and uh but but by then i would have showed you a lot of things you know so it's only a few things that i would put in here which obviously if you're going to be collecting payments you're making money you can afford to pay me right and um if you're going to deploy on app platform you are definitely making money and you can afford to pay me but if you get to this point and you're just happy with how everything looks and you don't want to deploy it you're not going to go live you don't want to figure out payment processing then i will just give you that content for free so that's how we'll do it okay so um yeah thank you guys for watching and i will see you again next week when we continue with this um video tutorial